Welcome everyone. Today we have a new updated guide from Lightning Marksman using the HP tank setup. Now looking behind me, you can see the demonstration of a marksman in two variety of different forms. The first one I'll be demonstrating to you guys is the ability to clear over 2500 corruption using the HP set with a minimum cost. So yes, I'm trying to make some builds for you guys and also a different setup that will demonstrate that using the minimum and also the lowest legendary potential cost, you can still do great with the Falconer build. Just understanding some crucial aspects and also effects for the build can demonstrate and also make this work. So the first demonstrations, we're looking at our HP set using two red rings without legendary potential. The second demonstration I want to show you guys is going to be no red rings and also using most of the exalted items you can find in the game. And right away you can see, our damage number is pretty sizable and also we have a lot of light game, we have lots of sustain. Most of the time I'm preserving my potions for the fights which I'm lacking a little bit of mana. You can see the mana can be a little bit of issue for the first build and yes, we're much much more durable and I am face tanking everything in the map and the downside is I will be using my potions for mana because my gears are not getting enough mana region. Now coming over to a brief summary and also a boss fight. Compared to most of our marksman build, we're doing tons of damage. And yes, even at 2500 corruption, I don't see us having a problem against the boss. The bigger problem is to be surviving long enough in the echoes and also to consistently farm the echoes. Other than that, the lag is an issue, and we're still trying to look into ways to fix that. And let's have a look at the damage numbers against the boss. So here we didn't have any potions, my friend wasn't prepared for the potions. And you can see that against the boss, we're actually shredding armors massively. So over 400 armor shred, I believe. And this takes down the boss within 7 or 8 seconds. It is a little longer compared to the 2000 corruption boss, but you are doing sizable damage even with a bare minimum set of items. So if you guys are interested, I'll have the replays available for you guys to have a look at the testing set of items that were used. We try to keep it minimum, so this way this is doable for most of the players. Yes, some of the exalted items are more crafted, but you can easily find more of those stats with your idols. Now, what I also wanted to show you guys is the ability to use a no red ring set to also clear over 2000 corruption. So here is our second demonstration of the build. And here we'll have a look at the HP set with a variant. And this one, I'm really happy about this because I was wondering if our tank marksman can really do 2000 plus corruption. And right away, you can see we're still very durable and even more durable than most of the warding set, even with some good legendary potentials. Most of the time, our HP is pretty full, simply because we have lots of dodge mechanics with Swift and also tons of endurance. You can see that our damage numbers is still very high and everything melts in 2000 corruption. So this is a really good demonstration to show you guys that less is enough for the maximum build. Because we pack tons of damage, we just have to find a way to deal those damage while keeping ourselves alive. Now having those exalted rings crafted means I have a little more mana and also a little more mana region to make this build deal even more damage. And finally, coming over to the 2000 corruption boss with the variant of having less legendaries and also unique items for the new HP setup. You can see that my friend was pretty durable and <laughs> you can see that he was standing in a pool. But yes, the Yunduans really have a big factor. In terms of damage, it can be a little less compared to the warding set, but it still does some really good damage. And if you guys are playing on the HP set, having some exotic items like this build is definitely doable and it's actually much, much cheaper. Now, similar to the 2500 corruption setup, I'll also have the replays of this offline testing character to show you guys the demonstration of the build. And yes, guys, we're testing this on the offline characters so that we can try different items, different build, and also the cost of those items won't be too high as we craft different items. So now coming over to our builder's guide, you can see there are several builder's guides that will be available for you guys to have a look. And some of them have variants with one red ring, with two red ring, and also with no red rings. And those are some of the previous builder's guide we have provided to you guys. So here we're currently looking into ways of making the build cheaper. The first setup is the one that demonstrated over 2000 corruption without using any red rings. I have opted into having elemental resistance on the gold rings and also damage over time reduction on the amulet. 
And the second variant is where you can push up to 1,000, 1,500 corruption using two legendary potential, one legendary potential, and two legendary potential on most of the items. So this is the cheapest setup for the marksman that will allow you to push for over 1,500 corruption. And I think it's quite important to have a build like this. So as you guys transition it into the build, you can know which step of the way you can be going for. And if you guys have seen our previous video, we have had an updated version for the warding build as well, which is using a similar concept to make things cheaper and also achievable for you guys. And if you guys haven't seen the Lightning Marksman in the HP version, in this video, I explain things into more details together with the previous build that will be available. So in the first part of the demonstration video, I was using the red rings to clear over 2,500 corruption and not much has changed with that. We're still enjoying a lot of good passives that will be providing us with tons of dexterity using elusive, together with tons of armor coming from the shurikens and also dealing tons of AOE damage coming from the detonating arrows. So this, the first demonstration is to show you guys that if you're playing the HP set, this set has potential to go over 2000 to 3000 plus corruption. And yes, in the future, I'll try to make and max this particular setup so we go over 3,000, maybe even 4,000 corruption. The highlight of the build is this cheaper version of the setup. So here, as you can see, the bigger difference are having the rings and having the amulet, which will provide us with tons of more damage against the bosses and also rare monsters up to 14% with a separate multiplier. Now, in exchange with the new setup, we're currently using gold rings that provide us with mana regen, lightning damage, different resistance, the endurance threshold, and also the potential to craft any sealed affixes that give us additional resistance. So you can see those elemental rings can be crafted for whatever we're missing. Now you might have noticed we're not getting a lot of throwing attack speed. This is simply because during the testing, I noticed that we're constantly on low mana. Even popping potions, we're still on pretty low mana. And because of this, I have decided to go for more mana regen over the throwing attack speed. Because the faster you throw, the more mana it's going to cost. But not having enough mana means you're not going to have enough damage. So the rings and also the gloves have been adjusted compared to the previous setup, where we have been getting some throwing attack speed. In terms of the amulet, you really do want damage over time reduction. And this is also the wave implicit for the gloves. So this way, while stacking tons of armor, you have so much damage mitigation coming from both armor and also coming from your doing threshold. So this effectively gives you tons of effective HP. Together with the ability to life gain on melee hits, this build is self-sustainable. So this is one of the bigger factor. And because we're hitting enemies so many times with detonating arrows and converting that into a melee damage, the melee attack health gain on hit is actually pretty sizable to keep ourselves alive. So if we briefly come over to some replays, you can see there are times the monster take me down to the threshold amount with my HP, but I will heal up very quickly. And this is always the case because we have the mini life gain, so, and hitting so many multiple targets, we're constantly gaining so much more HP to make this build much, much safer. Now over here, I really want to stress out the importance of the life gain on hit with the tier five FX on the weapon over here. And this is gonna be the cornerstone of this life stealing build. Now I know what you guys might be thinking. You might be saying, hey Matt, you can't life steal because of the helmet, which prevents you from life leech. But what we realized after testing is that with last epoch, there are particular lines regards to life leech and also life leech. There are also lines regards to health gained and those are sort of separately. So even though this helmet says we cannot life leech, but in reality, if we have this particular FX, which allows us to gain life as we attack, this will still heal our character. So let me show you guys a demonstration over here. And here you guys can see in the replays, we're using the 16 health per hit with melee attacks. Now we're converting detonating arrow into melee attacks because of the special effects of the daggers. So keep that in mind as well. So that regards, we're doing lots of melee attacks because we're auto triggering detonating arrows. So here, the first demonstration is using a dagger that does not have life gain on hit. And notice our life is not going up. I'm not using potions, I'm just throwing my traps and that's it, our life is not going up. We're only getting some regeneration. And now I'm gonna swap the daggers into the life gain on hit. And here we're gonna throw some traps. 
and right away what you're gonna see is we will be gaining life as we auto cast deadly arrows and this is gonna be the biggest factor for you to life steal or life gain on hit as you sustain yourself using this build and notice i'm topped up to maximum hp and let's do the testing again let's take away the daggers and let's see if i gain any life now this is a pretty interesting discovery and because of this this is what make the hp build stands out for me compared to the warding build simply because you can be gaining life just using one particular affix and you don't even have to have this on both daggers just having this on one of the daggers is enough for us to sustain ourselves because we're doing so many melee attacks and you can see my life instantly goes back to max hp as i throw my traps against enemies and that is why guys as you're gonna see with the cheaper version of the build with only two legendary potential we also have this particular important affix to life gain on hit in one of the daggers it doesn't have to be on both of the daggers because it will be a waste of spot we'll be getting more damage with lightning attack percentage over here now i did have some questions about lightning damage versus flat damage we have tested this out and you can be having lightning damage over here or you can be having melee lightning damage as a flat damage increase both of those give a similar damage increase but because the scaling and also lightning percentage might be better we have decided to go with lightning percentage damage for most of the future builds now i also forgot to mention that for those of you guys who are going for me and max for this particular build for high levels we have also theory crafted an end game setup that is going to be more expensive using more legendary potential on the gears to make yourself even stronger for over 3000 level corruption we'll be testing this and maybe pushing even for 4000 corruption in the future videos with your stronger setup so you can be seeing how we can make and max the build as well now a lot of the viewers have been providing me feedback saying that with Rax's latest marksman video using the HP setup and also our multiple videos, the cost of those items are extremely high. Even for two or three legendary potential, this can be a little unachievable. So I have made adjustment for the build that can take you guys over 1,500 corruption using only two affixes or two legendary potentials on the weapon. We're having life gain on melee hit as the second affix, just so that we can survive. You can see that most of the cases, even against the boss, we deal tons of damage. And the second weapon, we're still going with lightning damage and also critical strike multipliers. So this way, you just need two legendary potential crafted on the weapons, and that should be enough. We're getting some sealed armor shading effects on the amulets and also on the gloves. If you can seal one of them, that is enough. But if you can seal both of them, you'll be shedding even more armor and dealing more damage in a burst instance. Now for the cheaper version of this build, you can see our prioritization will be getting in doing threshold and also the important critical strike multipliers. As for the chairs, we're just getting as much health as we can. For the boots, we decide to go for some armor and also bonus damage reduction from critical strikes. And this is also the theme for the gloves and also for the rings. We're always looking for Endurance Threshold, together with the defensive potential that brings up with even more Endurance Threshold coming from the boots, we're actually very durable and we can face stand and also tank most of the monsters. Finally, in terms of the Relic, it is also optional to go for anything that is defensive, but having the Critical Strike Multiplier goes a long way, and the second FX, we can go for something defensive like Endurance Threshold. So yes guys, this is the much cheaper version and this is a well-rounded version that can take you to much higher corruption at almost minimal cost compared to the previous versions. And that has been my goal as I was testing with my friend for the high level corruptions and also testing the maximum build. We have determined that this build does not lack damage, simply because you're triggering so much damage instances they actually make the game lag. And as you can see, in most of the fights, we're applying so much armor shredding effects that the boss will melt in seconds. So our biggest goal for most of the build is to make it cheaper, make it achievable, and finally make it durable so that you can take the time and also deal the damage against the boss. Now, if we briefly have a look at the stats as my friend was fighting the boss, you can see something pretty cool over here. I'll try to pause at the same at the right moment. So after dodging, what you're going to see is you're going to see a boost of dodge rate which will be converted into endurance threshold so this is how after most of our dodging you're getting over 10,000 into endurance threshold so this is not going to be the biggest factor and what is happening is just so you guys know what's happening so here we're converting all the dodge rates into endurance threshold 
and because of the special effect of the unique breeds. And over here, as for the skills, we're converting all the dexterity into bonus dodge rating. And this in effect, while having a lot of dexterity, only 63 over here will give us close to you know 5,000 dodge rating that can be converted into enduring threshold. So one of the advice I want to give to you guys is always using Swift using this particular setup and you are sitting on so much more enduring threshold and this makes you super defensive with over 60% damage reduction. Now I know some of the viewers have been asking me about this particular amulet and this is the one that was Rax was recommending as well. So the fire resistance, lightning resistance are very decent but in the end stage of the game, we're looking for implicits that reduce damage over time taken. Now in terms of the endurance bonus over here, the 15%, it actually won't do too much because once you go over 60%, you won't get any bonus damage reduction. So a little unfortunate for that. In terms of lightning damage, lightning penetrations, those are great. But this amulet is ideally to deal more damage. While this particular animal will allow us to craft whatever way we wanted and also allows us to do more damage while balancing with the resistance we're lacking for the build. So this is more of a well-rounded amulet and the devotion amulet will be very good for more damage. But if you guys remember what I said earlier, our build does not lack damage. So we decided to go with the exalted amulet with less damage but more defensive capacities. Now in terms of the skills and also passives, they have not changed much. And if you have been following a guide, you can see they're very similar. One note over here is that because we want to stand our ground and we want to be very durable, we went back to have this particular perk so that you can remove debuffs. This here in turn means we're actually losing one point over here and we're still getting the points for additional dark shot for additional gains of the warding, but it's not gonna be the biggest deal. So having ability to remove debuffs is going to be great for the build and this allows you to avoid any debuffs and also resistance shredding effects. Now in terms of the idols, we're going with health and also increased health. If you guys are finding yourself lack with any resistance, you can of course go with additional resistance. You can see in the demonstration of the build, I was sitting on 4000 HP and sometimes even higher. So HP is definitely not going to be the biggest problem because my endurance threshold over here is not going to catch up with over 4,000 HP. In that sense, you want to balance your resistance to over at least 75 or even 85%. As for the blessings, we're using critical strike multipliers, all resistance, armor, and also increased armor. Finally, we're going with lightning damage, and I have explained this in the previous video. So the concept of going for lightning damage is that we're dealing a lot of damage and we don't need to deal even more damage against the boss. Having bonus lightning damage also compensates for the loss of lightning damage that you might not craft on your weapons. Together with the effects of killing small minions faster, this allows you to have a safer transition in the echoes. You will do a little less damage against the boss though, and that is the trade-off compared to lightning shedding effects. Now if we come over to the score rotations for the build, it is pretty straightforward. You do want to be swifting a lot so you can be shifting and also gaining bonus dodge rate and also endurance rate. Other than that, as long as you're constantly casting your traps, your explosive traps, you actually automatically life steal having the special effects on one of your weapons. So the melee attack life steal will give you tons of health back and this keeps you alive, sustained and top up with health which is something I'm really missing because of warding build, we can't gain warding that consistently. So this build does feel much safer and much durable with a few simple choices of items. And yes, as long as you're keeping yourself mobile, you're also gaining additional damage reduction coming from your passives. Now in terms of the boss fight, it is pretty straightforward. You just want to swift into the boss and then cast your smoke bomb. This will give you increased damage and allows you to do your burst damage. Most of the case guys, you will take them the boss super fast, just with the tons of armor shredding effects. Now hopefully you guys found this particular video helpful. Even though the videos and also the demonstrations are very short, it took me and my friend ages to be testing a variety of builds, different setup, and also using different items and also combinations. And I, we do think this particular marksman setup is almost optimized and our future goal may be just to try to push for marksman over 3,000, 4,000 corruption with slightly better gears. But that will be me and maxing and also pushing things to the limit. 
and hopefully you find more enjoyment in a marksman setup even when the price and also inflation keeps going up in the marketplace. So what I do now is I'll provide you guys with those demonstration replays of two variety of the build. And at the end of the fight, you can see the stats and also item that was used during the demonstration of the test runs. And also the stats of the characters and also the enduring threshold for this particular build. Now, if you guys find my videos and also guides helpful and also want to support my passion in making more guides and also more videos for the last epoch and also more games to come like Path of Exile, please consider joining me on Patreon and also here I have created my Ko-Fi page. You can also support me directly through donations, but supporting me continuously with one of those membership will mean a lot for my future updated videos and to become financially sustainable so I can be continuing making videos for you guys and doing what I love the most and that is to share and also teach our communities as I dive into different games and making more guides for you guys. And as you guys are gonna see in the future, I'll have different ranks and also perk advantages and also special events and also special features for members like account reviews, perfecting the build for you guys and also co-op time play and also even special future videos for you guys on your special build for different members. happening. 